Let's bring this photo to life by enhancing its colors using nothing more than a little bit of Lightroom. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. As always, we're going to start us with the basic adjustments, fixing the exposure, white balance, and adding a little bit of extra glow. So let's expand the basic panel. And right away, what I want to do, since I want this image to be very well saturated, is I'm going to change the profile. And I'm going with the Adobe Landscape profile, since this, as you can see, will nicely boost the saturation already. Then as we take a look at this again, you can see there is a little bit of underexposure and in general, this shot is a little bit too dark. So we want to fix that. I'm going to bring up the exposure to do that. Right around here is a great point. We are stretching the histogram. We might end up with a little bit of clipping in the very brightest highlights, but I don't think it's that dramatic. And it's important to have some nice visible details in the shadows. So I want to further work on the darkest parts. I want to bring up the shadows just a little bit. And I also want to bring up the blacks. I do think we can raise them quite heavily. Of course, what this will do is it will lessen the contrast of the image, but it will also help to create some kind of soft effect. And for this scene, I really like to have a very soft effect going on. So that is great. Of course, the bright part in the sky is looking a little bit strange at this point. So I want to fix that by simply dropping the highlights. And as we drop the highlights, we will just reveal more details in this very bright spot right here. Okay, so I want to give this image some more sharpness. I'm going to bring up the texture for that. Then at the same time, as I was earlier talking about that glow, I want to emphasize this a little more. And I'm going to create some kind of autumn glow effect by dropping the clarity. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Very, very slightly. Just a little bit is enough to create a very subtle glow effect. And of course, we also want to bring up the vibrance to make the colors pop a little more. Now, what you can see after these basic adjustments is the exposure looks fine. But the colors are a little bit too cold for a sunrise scene like this. Of course, what we can do for that is to work on the white balance. I prefer to do that after adjusting the exposure just to get a better idea of what the image looks like. So I can now get a better idea of what I want to do with the white balance. Obviously, I want to bring up the temperature, introducing more of that warmth. But I don't want to lose those blue color tones at the very top and right here in the foreground. So we need to be careful with the temperature slider, but I think I can go up a little more. Okay, right around here, you see we have these intense warm tones in the brighter areas of the image, but we still have those blue colors remaining at the very top. So that's a perfect spot for the white balance. Of course, we can emphasize these colors more later on with a bit of color grading. But for now, let's first compare the image to before real quick so you can see the difference from this dark cold raw file to this image after just a bunch of basic adjustments. Now let's quickly focus on a few areas locally with a bit of masking. Open up the masking panel and there is not much going on. I just want to make the sky look a bit more interesting. I also want to work on the foreground and add a little more glow on the bright part of the sky. So how do we do that? I'm going to use a linear gradient first and with that linear gradient, I'm trying to cover the darkest parts of the sky like this. I want to make this area darker and just give it a little more contrast overall. So we can do that with the contrast slider. This looks nice. Now what I'm going to do to make it darker is to bring down the blacks. I'm going to bring down the blacks since this will only affect the darkest areas of the sky and not, for example, this bright orange cloud right here. So in other words, we are just adding more contrast to the sky this way. All right, then let's also work on the foreground. I'm going to use another linear gradient. And again, I'm trying to cover the darkest parts of the foreground like this without affecting the bright reflection up in here. Okay, and what I want to do in here is I want to bring down the shadows, introducing more contrast. Then I do want to add some clarity, which should bring out more of that rock structure in the foreground. So let's pump it up a bit. This is looking much better. We could even add a bit of texture if you want, giving these details a little more crisp this way. And then let me play around with the temperature because I think at this point, the foreground is a little bit too cold. So I'm going to 
very carefully raise the temperature, trying to neutralize that blue color cast and get a much more pleasing look this way. Much better. Now for the glow effect. Therefore, we are going to use a simple radial gradient. I'm going to make it really, really thin and really long. Make sure the center of this radial gradient is outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And let's see, maybe push it a little further up like this. And now to add this glow effect, all I'm going to do is to bring up the blacks. All right, this is looking good already. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for a more intense glow. Just be careful with overexposure. Wonderful, that's looking great. What we can do as well is to add a little bit of temperature, just giving this glowing area some more warmth this way. So I'm really carefully adding some more temperature in here like this. And that's it for the masking already. Let me deactivate those three masks to give you an idea what the image looked like from before to after. And we achieved that with only using three masks. Now let's focus a little more on the color grading. Let's start things in the color mixer. There are a few things we can do. I want to start in the hue first. So one thing that is bothering me is the blue part of the sky actually has this very noticeable purple color cast. And using the hue settings, we can get rid of that. I'm going to make use of the purple color slider and I'm going to bring it down. This way, we are going to turn all the purple color tones up here in the sky into a more bluish color tone. And we can further emphasize this effect by bringing down the blue hue. And this will turn the blue tones more into a cyan color tone. And thus we're just fixing the purple color cast up in here. What I also not really like are those yellow color tones. That's just a personal thing, but that's something I usually do for my images. I just want to bring down the yellow hue turning the yellow tones more orange this way. And I'm going to further work on this effect by bringing down the orange hue, just like this. All right, let me deactivate the color mixer for a, mo for a moment so you can see the difference. This was the image before. Notice the very clear purple color cast up in the sky. And this is the image after the hue adjustment. Looks much better, but I think this change might get lost due to the YouTube compression. Anyway, let's continue. I also want to work on the saturation for a moment. I actually want to bring down the orange tones just a little bit. I also want to bring down the blue tones. And let's bring down purple as well. I'm going to take out a bit of saturation at this point because I'm adding back color later on with the split toning and I don't want to overdo it. So that's the reason for me to just tone down the saturation here a little bit. But as we use the luminance next, we will also bring back some saturation since I'm going to tone down the orange luminance, which will make the orange tones a little bit darker. But again, we are getting back a bit of saturation as well. I'm also going to darken the yellow tones this way. Right around here looks great. And we can make the sky darker by bringing down the blue tones. Wonderful. This is looking great. Then let's do some split toning. And that's always the most fun part to me. Here we can really add some creative looks to the image. Let's start with the highlights. And of course, we want to further warm up the highlights. So it just makes sense to use a warm color tone in here. Set up the hue first. I am going with a very reddish color tone right around here. And I'm going to really pump up the saturation. Right around here looks great. Let me turn off the split toning for a moment so you can actually see the difference from before to after. You see, this way we get much richer sunrise tones. And of course, we can further work on them by making use of midtones and shadows. So for the midtones, what we have in the image is are mostly warmer color tones. So I want to keep it this way by using a warm tone for the midtones as well. Again, I'm going with a very reddish color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation. For the midtones, I'm not going as crazy with the saturation as with the highlights because otherwise you might overdo it. But I think this is looking pretty good like this. Then for the shadows, we want to get some more color contrast going on. That means we are not going to use a warm color tone for the shadows, but instead we want to introduce some more coldness here. So set up the hue. We're going to use a cold color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation a bit so this blue tone becomes more visible. And just like that, we did the split toning. Again, let me deactivate these settings right here for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after. 
colors look much, much better already. Now we can do more things with the colors in the calibration tab. So let's go down in here. And again, that is something I do for most of my images because I just like how it looks. I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. You see, this will make these blue tones look a little bit more cyan-ish, but it will also affect the warmer color tones in a very pleasing way. To further improve this effect, I'm going to bring up the saturation a bit. And what I'm also going to do is to bring up the green primary hue, just because I think it looks good. All right. And that's pretty much it for editing the image in regards to the colors. Now, there are a few more things I want to change. First off, I want to head into the transform tab because the vertical lines aren't really straight. I want to fix that. So let's use that vertical slider and just bring it up a notch. Right around here looks much, much better. All right. Of course, now we have a huge gap towards the top of the image. I'm going to fix that later in Photoshop. But for now, what I want to do is to sharpen this image in the details tab. So let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up, then hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. You see, this way we can nicely target the subject and we don't need to sharpen anything else. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we're done in here. Of course, there are also a ton of sensor spots and a few other things we want to remove. Since I need to fix this gap at the top anyway in Photoshop, I'm going to do everything else in Photoshop now. So let's right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. I'm grabbing the lasso tool by pressing L and I'm just drawing a very rough selection around the gap at the top. And I'm going to hit Shift F5 and let's choose content aware. I hope this will work for this area, but let's see what this will do. It worked quite well. Still, I want to crop the image very gently like this. All right, then it's time to fix the sensor spots. I'm using the spot healing brush for that. Let's zoom in a bit and just paint over all these dots. I'm also going to remove some of these rocks right here in the foreground because I don't need every single one of them. This one is just looking a little bit strange, so let's get rid of it. And also right here in the foreground with this one. All right, and there we have it. And that's how we can bring our images to life by making the colors pop. Let me know what you think about this image. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.